we have defined acoustics, we have defined sounds, and we now need uh, an equation that governs acoustics. To do that, we are going to start from the Navier-Stokes equation and make a set of transformation to that equation so that we end up with a wave equation uh, for acoustics. I'm not going to go through all the equations. I'm actually not going to go through any equation in this presentation. They are all fully described in the textbook or in the PowerPoint slides if you want to go through them. What I will do in the video is to stress the importance and the relevance and the validity of the various hypotheses that we make. So, acoustics is part of continuum mechanics or fluid dynamics. Uh, and therefore it is somehow included in the Navier-Stokes equation. So that will be our starting point. The Navier-Stokes equation expresses three fundamental principles of conservation. There will be mass conservation that we call the continuity equation. There is the momentum equation which is somehow Newton's second law expressed in, in a different way. And finally, we have the energy equation, energy conservation uh, equation. Let's start with the last one because it's going to be very brief. We can disregard the energy equation in classical linear acoustics um, because the acoustic phenomenon, the uh, alternation of uh, higher pressure and lower pressure, the pressure fluctuation that we observe happens quickly and in an adiabatic way. Adiabatic doesn't mean isothermal. Temperature locally changes, goes up and down, even if it's barely noticeable and measurable, but um, there is no time for uh, heat to flow from the highest temperature point to the lowest temperature point. And so we can disregard the um, energy equation. So we just have four equations, three equations for uh, the momentum and one equation for uh, mass. To transform them, to simplify them, to adapt them to the needs of acoustics, we have to make a set of hypotheses. The first one is that the fluid is non-viscous. If a fluid is non-viscous, there can be no shear stress, but uh, and therefore, we have only uh, the, 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 the stress tensor reduces to its diagonal form with exactly the same value in uh, all directions. So we have an isotropic stress tensor with just one scalar unknown, which is the pressure. So the pressure will be our key uh, unknown in these equations. So what does it mean that air is non-viscous or the, the, that the acoustic fluid is non-viscous? We know that air has some viscosity. It has a low viscosity, but can we disregard it? Yes and no. Yes, we can disregard it because the equation that we get are widely applicable to uh, all the phenomena we are going to, to study. So we can indeed neglect the shear stresses uh, in, in our problem, but still if there's no viscosity, there is no loss. And we know that in acoustics there are losses. If you uh, play the games that kids, uh, that I used to play when I was a kid, you take a long hose, you talk on one side and your friend listens on the other side. Well, if there's no loss, if there's no viscosity, then theoretically this hose could have could be uh, 200 kilometer long and you would still hear uh, talking on on the other side which is not true so we will neglect viscosity but you will see that later on we will have to reintroduce in an ad hoc way uh, some kind of loss mechanism uh, to account for sound attenuation with the second hypothesis that we make is that uh, all the fields that we consider, pressure, density, and velocity, are made of two terms, are the sum of two terms. The first term is constant in space and in time. For instance, the pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus a fluctuating term. We will consider that the atmospheric pressure is large, constant in both space and time.
Same for density. The density will be the sum of a constant value plus a small fluctuating term. For velocity, we start by doing the same hypothesis, that you have a constant velocity plus a fluctuation velocity, but then we make an additional hypothesis that this constant velocity is zero, meaning that while I'm talking to you, I assume that the fluid in the room is not moving, but that the only movement of the particles of air is a small oscillation movement related to the propagation of the sound waves through the fluid. So the pressure is the atmospheric pressure or the hydrostatic pressure plus a very small fluctuating term. The density is a constant term plus a small fluctuating term. And the velocity just contains one component, an oscillation velocity related to the propagation of the acoustic waves. If we take that decomposition and feed it into the continuity equation and momentum equation that I also call Euler's equation and uh, you do some math about that and then you linearize the equations so you uh, only keep the first order terms in pressure density and velocity fluctuations if you do all that you end up uh, with a, a, a set of linear partial differential equations but that's not enough. We have density fluctuation, pressure fluctuation, and velocity fluctuation. So we have five unknowns, two scalar and one vector, and we have only four equations. So we need one equation more. That's usual in continuum mechanics, and uh, this equation is going to come from thermodynamic relationship. We make the hypothesis, again, that the acoustic fluid is barotropic. Barotropic means that the pressure is directly related to density. P equal F rho. Pressure is a function of density. And depending on the fluid we are going to consider, we'll see that later for air, um, the relationship can be different, but it's always some kind of of, of curve like the one you, you see here. But because we consider a constant pressure and tiny variation of that constant pressure and a constant density or, or specific mass plus a very small fluctuation of the specific mass, well, we, actually, we are actually not concerned with the entire curve but just with a single point on the curve and then what happens very close to that point. And so locally we can also uh, linearize this relationship. The pressure to density relationship is not linear, but we, because we are only concerned with what happens very close to one given point of the curve, we can linearize that. And if we do that linearization, we end up with something quite interesting is that the pressure fluctuation and the density fluctuation are proportional to one another. And the, 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 uh, the proportionality factor is called c square. It's a constant, it's a positive constant, and we will see later that this c is nothing but the speed at which the sound waves are propagating. So it's actually a definition of the speed of sound. The speed of sound is the square root of the slope of the pressure to density relationship at the uh, atmospheric conditions. And if we now put this proportionality relationship in the equations that we had obtained and do again some mathematical tricks, we obtain a wave equation also called the d'Alembert equation for the pressure fluctuation. Uh, in this expression, delta is the Laplace operator, and you see uh, that there, there is a clear relationship between the Laplacian of the, the acoustic pressure value and the, time, the second time derivative of that acoustic pressure fluctuation. The wave equation is not the only equation we recover from this manipulation of the Navier-Stokes equation. If we look at Euler's equation, 
we obtain a very important relationship between the velocity field and the pressure field. Uh, if we know the acoustic pressure everywhere, we know the local velocity is just a matter of applying this equation.